I'm talking about your mind. I'm talking about your emotions, your will, your spirit, your fight, your drive, your tenacity, your sense of normalcy, your courage to get out of the house, your courage to get out of the bed, the courage to continue when there's a threat requires that there's something about God that you have to remember. The dying words of the thief on the cross was remember me. The words of Jesus at the Last Supper is as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. What does remember mean? Remember, re, put back together again. Remember me. When we remember what God has done, that becomes the foundation on which we build our lives. Now, a house is not a foundation and nobody can live in a foundation, but it has to have a foundation in order to be a house. And I'm not suggesting that your life begins, ends, and all through the middle is nothing but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because you got to take out the trash, you got to brush your teeth, you got to comb your hair, you got to get your nails done, you got to get your feet done, or you're going to cut your blankets when you're laying in the bed at night. All of that happens. But I am saying that God is the foundation. When God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, he did it as a foundation for them to remember. And all through the Old Testament, he says over and over again, am I not the God who brought you out from the Red Sea? Am I not the God who brought you out by my own hand and my strong arm? It becomes a point of reference to which you face the future, remembering what he did in the past, remembering it, putting it back together again, and again, and again, and recreating it as a point of reference to fight from, to stand from, to drive from, to, to preach from to teach from, what do you have to remember? It's important that you have something to remember, something on God's resume that you know that you know that you know that he did for you. And it tells you that if God would do that, he can do this. If he can drive back the Red Sea and bring me across on dry land, then he can fight you off. He can deal with the Amalekites and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Gerashites. God does certain things so you will have something to remember, a point of reference to which you build your life upon and you stand on it and you say, I'm not sure about this and I'm not sure about that, but this one thing I do know. You have to know this. You have to know this in your knower. You have to know this when your girlfriend doesn't know it. When your prayer warriors don't know it, when your children don't know it, when your mama doesn't know it. Something that you know that you know that you know becomes the catalyst against the trials, against the traumas, against the sleepless nights, against the virus, against the crisis, against the times that we're living in. We have been living in the most perilous times that we have seen in a hundred years. We are living in a time where nearly 700,000 people are now dead from a, something we can't even see. We are fighting an invisible enemy and that enemy has friends that has created trauma and distress until we are overwhelmed even when nothing else is going wrong. Just the feeling that other people are going wrong gives us a certain degree of stress and trauma. We, how do we stand up against this unseen foe we fight right now? Of course we need to do everything we can to protect ourselves from the virus. But I'm not just talking about the virus, I'm talking about your mind. I'm talking about your emotions, your will, your spirit, your fight, your drive, your tenacity, your sense of normalcy, your courage to get out of the house, your courage to get out of the bed, the courage to continue when there's a threat requires that there's something about God that you have to remember. For the children of Israel, it was the blood of the lamb that was painted on the doorpost. And that angel passed by and said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It was walking out to the Red Sea and hearing 600 chosen chariots coming with Pharaoh chasing them down, saying, I'm going to get you back. He was going to get them back, but let me tell you a secret. He was also trying to get back the wealth they'd taken. For the wealth of the unjust had been laid up for the just. And they had borrowed all the gold and all the silver, and they had broken the GDP of Egypt. 
it wasn't just the slaves he wanted. He wanted the money back. He wanted the jewels. He wanted the gold. He wanted the silver. He wanted the things that the tabernacle would actually end up being built by. He was trying to get it all back. He could have got some more slaves anywhere. He was trying to get what they had borrowed. They had borrowed the whole economy of Egypt was running through the Red Sea. For the wealth of the unjust is laid up for the just. And when God brings you out, he brings out enough for your children. The Bible says that God put so much wealth on them that their children had to carry on their backs the wealth that God placed on them. I want the kind of blessing that affects my children and my children's children and my children's children's children. I, I, I want my grandchildren to blow kisses at my picture when I'm dead and gone. I want them to be able to say, if it hadn't been for that old man, I'd have never been able to go to college. I'd have never been able to get a job. I'd have never been able to work for Google. I'd have never been able to work for Xerox. I'd have never been able to preach the gospel. I would have never been able to do it. I want that for them. So I have to have something to remember that I can count on that won't break. And I want to ask you, what do you remember when life gets hard? When things get tough, when friends get few, there ought to be something in your life that you remember God brought you through or brought you from or brought you out of that feeds you. That is the foundation that makes you to rise above the crushing and turns grape juice into absolute wine. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.